When my grandfather got older, he went out seeking power. And when he went out, he was walking and he, had, he was hunting. Some of us, when we seek power, we go and we fast like more so did he. We have Chief Mountain that we go to. We go to the belly beaks. We go down to the river bottoms. We find a quiet place and we sit quietly. We go without food all day long. We drink water before the sun rises and we drink water after the sun sets. So my uh, grandfather was very gifted in the fact that his helpers came to him. He wasn't, on that day, he wasn't looking for helpers. He was just out hunting. And he was standing there and he saw an eagle chasing a rabbit. And the rabbit saw him. So where he was standing, the rabbit came and hid between his legs and the eagle flew over and he told my grandfather move out of the way I've been hunting this one all all morning I'm the <coughs> fastest of the sky animals and the rabbit told my grandfather no don't move I'm the fastest of the land animals uh, he's been hunting me all morning. He hasn't been able to catch me. So my grandfather took these two gophers and fed them to the eagle. He dropped a feather for him. And the rabbit told my grandfather, use my ears. You'll be swift when you go on raids. Your life, you'll be lucky. So my grandfather succeeded in that way. These stories that were told and after I started, um, I turned back to my old ways. I was about 20 years old when I, long, long time ago, darlings. <laughs> but I um, turned back to my old ways and it was very difficult because we were being raised in a place where they said, if you dare go up to the Sundance, you have to say penance, you have to do penance, you have to go to confession. And the sun dance was something so special to me because all my grandparents went up there. My grandpa Jack Lowhorn, uh, my grandpa Weaselhead, they, that's where their homes were. My, my relatives from Montana would come uh, my my relatives from Montana would come a couple weeks before, you know, we always operate on Indian time. So they would come and camp by us, and when they heard that there was enough people up at the Sundance, then they'd move up there, and uh, they'd camp there. So I'd have all my grandmothers from the States and here, I'd, I'd help my, my grandmothers clean their buckskins because they wanted their buckskins just white. So I would sit outside and I taught my grandmother, you know, chip rock? Mm -hmm. I found some chip rock and I told my grandmother, nah, -uh, I've got something really good for you to clean your buckskins with. So I brought her this piece of chip rock and we peeled the paper back and she was pretending that I did something so wonderful. Oh my girl, you're so smart. You gave me this to clean and then later on I found out it, she didn't use it. She, what she did was she put flour on her buckskin and then she'd scrape it with a a can, and here I gave her this chip rock, and but she didn't. She never would make me feel bad. You know, it was just such a wonderful thing. After my experience at boarding school, having no self-esteem, and uh, you know, I I thought, hey, well, what's so bad about being native? What's so horrible about being native? 
I'm gonna go find out about my people. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna be their hands and feet. So I became the hands and feet of my elders because I wanted to hear their stories. I wanted to know what was so bad about them. I needed to know why why the nuns and the priests told me that these people were so bad. So I went and man did I have a good time. <laughs> I I got my spirituality back from my elders. The things they taught me I can't ever get anywhere else. And so my ego started coming up. My uh, my grandparents passed on sacred things to me. I've been a medicine pipe keeper twice. I helped revive the beaver bundle ceremonies. And this knowledge that I was getting, and we'd sit with my my elders and we'd show them pictures that we had tons and tons of pictures and they started identifying them and one day my grandpa weasel had told me you know my girl wouldn't it be wonderful if all these pictures were in a book and so I passed the knowledge on to my husband at the time and uh, he was really reluctant to, to do this work, to write these stories. And uh, uh, But through the pushing of our elders, because our elders wanted their stories to be told. They wanted the young people to have this experience. They knew they weren't going to be around. So they wanted us to record everything they said. So I started recording this, and um, as an offshoot, I thought, well, what about the women? The women! So I started studying with my grand grandmothers, and this is exactly how my the ways of my grandmother started out. I went to my grandmother, and I told her, how do you make dried meat? And my grandma said, oh, you just cut it like this. And, and my grandpa was sitting there, and he turned to my grandma, Kipitaki, ask her how she would cut, cut the meat. And uh, I told her, well, if I had a hind quarter, I'd just cut like this. And I, oh, no, 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 you don't do that. You take all the muscles apart in a hind quarter, and that's what you make jerky out of. You don't just cut into the meat. And so, because my grandmother gave me that knowledge, she told me, said, your husband's writing a book about the men, so now you have to write a book about the women.